Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to do a full edit on this picture. It's something I literally grabbed with my phone as I saw this person walking underneath the tree. So, first of all, let's take a look at the composition and mm, it looks like it's, it's a nice picture with the tree and the person there. It shows the person is small against the tree. But I think there's a better crop around here. So I'm just going to crop there Go down partly through the tree trunk, not too much, not too little. Take this out, and the person's approximately on the thirds there, that's pretty good. And then take a bit, and you don't want too much of the base, but we do want to get in the arch up there. And so I'll apply that, and control zero. And yeah, I think that's okay, maybe a little bit less of the trunk. You don't need all the trunk like that. Just a bit. And look for things like that. What does this need? Maybe a little bit more over here as well. Don't, I'm not going to leave the person in the middle. Keep them in the thirds area. So they've got space in front of them. Now then, looking at this, I think it might be better the person going the other way. This mass here will also provide an end stop as your eye goes from left to right. So let's do a flip. And I'll just go document flip horizontal. There you go. I think that's better there. We'll also now try and affect the grayscale of this because I think it would be better with a more contrast rather than leave it in this grey. So I'm going to go just do it with levels. And there you can see the histogram. So I'm bringing this in here and this one into here. You can see I've got more contrast in there, but I need to pull things out later on. But that's the, the full information is in there. Can if I want to play with gamma here to adjust the further contrast within that. And I'm also going to use this to convert to grayscale. So the RGB there go to gray. And I'm going to recolor it later on. And because I've done that, I've changed the color model. So I could retweak this back to where it was. So bring that in there and a little bit of, maybe a little bit of gamma there. OK. Right, now then what I can do here is let's start looking a bit more detail. And this one here, that is a, yeah, this, this is just a bit that's kind of getting in the way, kind of my eye caught it. And if your eye caught catches things, that means do you really need it? So what I'm going to do with that is I'm just going to clone it out. So I'm going to put in a pixel layer here. And normally I put the pixel layers together. So I'm going to drag that down under here and do it there. And then I'll just get a clone. Make sure that I've got current layer in below set. Alt click here and just paint that over just to tidy that up. That's OK there. Also, just zoom in, start looking at things here. What you start to see with this is that there's, there's a bit of a halo around here and there's a whole bunch of artifacts here because it came from a JPEG. It would be nice to clean that lot up so that if you printed it in particular, you could see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, above the levels there, put in, first of all, a micro blur. So I'm going to go from there to Gaussian blur. I'm going to zoom right in so I can see what I'm doing with this. Because if I turn up the radius just a tiny amount, see 0.1 fixes a lot, and then 0.2, maybe that's a bit better. But because it's live, I can always come back and change that later. So that's improved that. And I'm going to go out for the next one. Because what I'm going to do with this is do a higher alone sharpening, which is a go to unsharp mask. Higher alone stands for high radius, low amount. In this case, high radius, low factor. So normally when you turn this up, let's go back into here for a moment. If I start increasing the radius, there's a point at which you can start to see the halo around things, that little white line. But if I go further, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger and just sort of like shoots outwards. 
So if I put that to 200, so I can type in a number there, that's even bigger. So let's have a look at that there. So this has actually improved that further. And then I can use the factor to change this. As I see a change, churn up the factor, it starts to increase the radius there. So I'm going to put that in at around about 0.7 or so. So I've got a more contrast. So I'm adding contrast within these controls here. And uh, because I've changed the contrast, I'm actually going to double check the levels. Yeah, it's still OK. And that's still OK there. Maybe I'll actually put the levels above there and see what that says. Yeah, it's OK, because I, I was checking it down there. This is good. Right, now then, I'm going to change the colours. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll use the levels here. I'll put it into grey, so it's black and white. So I can add colours based on the luminosity. And the way to do that is go to the gradient map. And what this does is this adds colours based on how light or dark the picture is. So and to take colours off here, you pick points there, you just drag it off and that disappears. And this goes from black to white, so blacks are red and whites are blue. So let's fix it first of all. I go to there, click on the colour and I just drag down in here and that's got the blacks to black. That one there, click on the colour and drag upwards there. And you've got everything at full extent, so that's whites to whites, so that's kind of as it was. But now we want to start changing the colour. So the whites, let's just make this a bit warmer with this and make this a bit more of the orange colour. You can see when you get orange, you get kind of a straight line in here. A perfect orange is a straight line. So we can just put in a little bit of warmth in the back there. In fact, maybe we can extend that too. So I'm going to put that one around about 60. This one around about 80, so give a straight line. So I've got a kind of a warmth across the lights of the picture. Then if we go to the blacks, the blacks in particular are things like the leaves and also more, even more so the tree trunks. So I'm going to go to black. I'm going to make that one brown, which is a dark orange. That's too dark there, so I need to drag this down here. I use this to set it up and then start tweaking the red, green and blue to make it a kind of finely adjust this. You can see how sensitive these colours are to the colour you get. So I'll make that down to straight line there, so that's going to be 10, 5 and 0. So that's this a dark brown in here. We'll get to the leaves in a moment. I'm going to put a 50% point in here. Click on there, run away 50%, that's got it. I'm going to keep this the same as this one here. So this is going to make sure I keep the, the detail in there. So I'll go to the colour and so I'm going to go from there, this one around about 50%, this one halfway there, so about 75% that'll do. So there's light coming into this, but I'm still quite strongly into the orange. So I've toned this now into a, almost a sepia thing, but I'm going to put a bit of colour in now here for the leaves. And I put one here about halfway down. There again, so around about 25%. If it's, if it's just out, it doesn't matter. And then for this, the colour here, I'm going to take out the blue. And the red and the green, if you put those round about together, you get kind of a leafy green. So we'll put that round about 50%. See, you can see I've got that leafy green in that, just that area. You can see how I immediately got the green here. I've got the background keeping here. The browns are disappearing a bit, so I'm going to put another one in here. There, round about 6%. Yeah, that'll do. And... We'll put that to brown, so I need a line down here. So this is going to be round about, about 15. So you need to take time tweaking this, looking carefully, carefully at what you're doing here. So that's brought back the browns to just about into the, the tree trunk there. And there, that's a lot better colour. So last of all, I'm going to just add a little bit more colour down here. I'm going to bring the colour here. This doesn't need to be so green. And I'm going to bring in a bit more sunset. So I'm going to put in a recolour adjustment. Then I'll mask it. So the recolour, let's make this. 
Actually, me if I, if I can roll the mouse wheel over here. So I'm going to make that round about 45. Look at the orange a lot across the edge here. So that sort of implies the kind of rising sun or the setting sun. And that's good for that. And what I'm going to do is put a gradient on it. I'm going to paint on this with a gradient. It puts a mask on. So I can literally go to the gradient tool here. And I'm going to paint in black and white on here. So I'm going to keep it at the bottom here and let it fade off as I go upwards here. And so I've got that effect now just fading off so it's keeping it in the greens. It's not affecting the tree so much there. And I can play with the colour effects of the blend effects on this so I can get its intensified colour burn. Kind of intensifies that. It's affecting the greens a little bit there but that's not too bad. And well I think that's about my final image. So literally after the crop I've gone from that one there to that one there. I think that's not bad isn't it? So there we go. Hope you liked that and thank you very much for watching.